Hi everyone, in this episode we're going to be adding support for collisions and jumping to our character. Let's start by adding in a few obstacles, so I'll just use Unity standard prototyping assets for this. Uh, drag in a couple of these cube prefabs, just like so, and maybe scale these randomly. Something like that, should be fine. And just for fun we can also add in a ramp and maybe some steps as well. All right, uh, let me get that above ground, preferably. Then just to organize the scene a little bit, I'll make an empty game object and I'll just call this collisions and just drag all of these things under there. All right, then to enable collisions for our character, we're going to want to either use the rigid body or the character controller component for convenience sake, we'll be using the character controller in this series because that gives us some information about where collisions actually occur and as an added bonus, it can walk up steps. When we created our character, we made him with a height of 1.7 units. So let's set our character's collider height to 1.7 and then we'll want to set the center on the y-axis to half of that, so 0.85. And we'll also want to make the radius a little bit smaller. I'll put it about 0.3, and we can maybe move this forward slightly on the Z axis. All right, opening up the player controller script, we'll want to get a reference to our character controller. So let's just write character controller, we can call that controller, and then in the start method, we'll just set that using get component of type character controller. All right. Now, in our update method, instead of using transform.translate, we're instead going to create a vector3 velocity, which we'll set equal to transform.forward times current speed, and we'll leave out time.delta time. And then to actually move the character, we'll say controller.move and pass in velocity times time.delta time. All right, so if we save that and try it out now, we should be able to move around and have our movement be constrained to collisions. Uh, currently, importantly, there's no gravity being applied. So once we run up this slope, we never actually fall down. Let us rectify that. So we can maybe create a public float here for the gravity value we want to use. Gravity, let's set that equal to say negative 12 by default and then we're also going to want a float that will store our velocity on the y-axis so each frame will say velocity y plus equals time dot delta time times gravity and then we'll include our velocity y in our velocity calculation by just saying plus vector 3 dot up multiplied by velocity y now, we of course want to reset velocity y when the character is uh, standing on the ground. So we'll say if controller dot is grounded, then velocity y is equal to zero. All right, let's save that and try it out. So if we run up the slope now, we do fall down. And we can also run up the steps, and that works as well. All right, now one thing that I'd like to fix is that currently if we run into an obstacle, you can see we're not moving anywhere, but the animation is still playing. So I'd like to make it so that if we're not actually moving, then the character just stands still. So the character controller has got a velocity variable which is what the controller's actual velocity is once you take collisions into account. So now that we've moved the character, we want to update our current speed variable to what the controller's actual current speed is. So remember that this current speed only worries about the x and z axes, since we are calculating velocity y separately. So we're going to say current speed is now equal to a new vector2, based on controller.velocity.x and controller.velocity.z. 
and then we'll get the magnitude of this, since this is the speed, not the velocity. Now to figure out the actual animation speed percent, we can say if we're running, then that will be equal to current speed divided by the maximum run speed. Otherwise, it will be the current speed divided by the maximum walk speed, and animation speed percent should be a half when the character is walking, so we multiply this by 0.5. Alright, so let's save and test this out. Walking and running still work as normal, but now if we move into a obstacle, the animation stops playing. Okay, next I'd like to add in jumping. Let's go to the top of the class and add in a new public float, which we'll call our jump height. Let's say by default you can jump one unit high. Then in the update method, we can say if input dot get key down, I'll use key code dot space for my jump key, just call a jump method. So let's say void jump. And in here we'll say if the controller is grounded, then we first want to figure out the jump velocity that will allow us to reach our jump height. So let's say float jump velocity. Now there is a kinematic equation that solves for this. If you're not familiar with the kinematic equations, I do have a short series on my channel covering those, but for now I'll just write out the equation. It's square root of negative two multiplied by gravity multiplied by the jump height. All right, then we simply say velocity y is equal to jump velocity. Let's test this out. So we can press spacebar to jump, and uh, if we just go into orthographic mode here, we can use the grid lines to verify that it is jumping one unit high. And let's just increase the jump height to two, and now it's jumping, unsurprisingly, two units high. So uh, in real life, of course, if you jump, once your feet leave the ground, you don't really have much control over anything anymore. But in our game, the carriage can actually completely change direction while in the air. So for a game, that's not necessarily a bad thing because it allows for more precise jumping and makes the character feel more responsive. But it would be nice to have a slider so that we can sort of adjust to what extent the player can do this. So let's create a public float called air control percent. So since this is just a value from zero to one, I'm going to add the range attribute zero one. We're going to be using this value to modify the smooth time for the character's rotation and for the character's current speed. So we'll create a method returning a float called something like get modified smooth time. This will take in a float called smooth time. In here we can say if controller dot is grounded, then we're just going to return the smooth time without any modification. So just return smooth time. If the controller is in the air, however, then we're going to want to return smooth time divided by the air control percent. So just to explain this, if air control percent is one, then obviously there's no modification, but say if air control percent is reduced to 0.5, then the smooth time will be doubled, meaning it will take twice as long for the character to react to the input, and so the player has less control over the character while the character is in the air. Of course, if air control percent is zero, then we don't want to divide by it because that's an error. So we'll have to do a little check for that. If air control percent is equal to zero, then we want to return the maximum possible value for the smooth time. So we just return float dot max value. All right, then whenever we do a smooth operation, we will pass our smooth time through the get modified smooth time method. All right, let's do the same thing for smooth damp angle over here. Oh, this is going all the way off my screen. But just like that is good. So let's save. And that slider should pop up now. 
at a control percent zero, you can see that once I jump, I have no control over my character, and I just have to wait until he lands to regain control. Uh, if I move this up to one, then I once again have full control over the character in the air, and at any lower value, it's obviously just somewhere in between. The last thing that I want to do in this episode is just organize the player controller class a little bit better. I'm going to have a method called move, which takes in a vector2 input direction, as well as a bool called running. And I'm just going to cut all of this stuff from the update method into the move method. And in the update method, We'll then call move and pass in input direction as well as a bool running which we need to create. So you can just grab that from over here, paste that in there, and pass it into the move method. All right. I seem to have spelt running with an excessive amount of ends, so I'll just remove one of those. Uh, the animation stuff I'm going to remove from the move method and put inside of the update method. So this is our input section over here, and then we'll have a section over here for the animator. All right, so it's just a little bit tidier now, and uh, we can leave it at that. So until next episode, cheers.